Windows Vista gets a bad rap and I don't think it's fair. What you have to understand is that a lot of new technologies were introduced with Windows Vista and it took Microsoft a little bit of time to get it right. I actually run Windows Vista on my home theater system. Not that I don't like Windows 7, it's just that I've got Vista running right so I keep it going. Now, this episode is not designed to talk about how bad Windows Vista is. The important thing you need to understand is that it's on the A-plus exams and we need to understand the aspects of Vista. In particular, there are five versions of Vista you need to know for the exam. There's Vista Home Basic, Vista Home Premium, Vista Business, Enterprise, and Vista Ultimate. In a nutshell, here are the differences. These are actually very similar to both Windows XP and Windows 7 versions. The Windows Home Basic is the most basic form of Vista that there is that's sold in the United States. It only supports a single CPU, it doesn't have a full-blown Aero desktop, and it doesn't come with a lot of the features that we see in more advanced versions. Speaking of features, Windows Home Premium is very similar to Home Basic, but it includes things like media player and stuff like that that people might use in a home. Now, if you get out of the house, you're going to start going to more advanced versions than that. Your base version for Vista is Vista Business. Vista Business includes the Aero desktop, so you get the pretty front end, but it also includes the ability, for example, to log into a domain controller, which in a business environment is pretty important. Moving on from there, the Vista Enterprise version is basically Windows Business, but the big difference is, is that the Enterprise version, as compared to the Business version, is that it provides multi-language support, so it can be used in very, very large networks where people are speaking different languages, it logs into domains, it, it's the really powerful for large enterprises and that's why they call it Vista Enterprise. Now if you want all the toys all packed together in a single version of Windows, you have to go with Vista Ultimate. Vista Ultimate adds all the features that are found in all the other versions of Windows Vista and also includes a few games and a couple of extra little toys. So that's the big difference when it comes to Windows Vista. Make sure you know all five versions. So now let's take a look inside Windows Vista. All right, so this is a fresh install of Windows Vista Ultimate. Now, I did a few things to it. For example, I got it on the internet and a few other small issues, but basically this is the default Windows Vista installation that you would see. Vista made a lot of changes compared to Windows XP that were refined with Windows 7, but so there are a few uh, differences between XP, Vista, and 7 when it comes to a lot of different issues, so we're going to kind of bounce through these. Let's start off by looking at the Start button itself. The Start button, while ostensibly looking similar to Windows XP, added the ability to search, which is really handy. So if I'm looking for a particular program, instead of digging all the way through all these menus to try to find it, I can begin typing it and it will go ahead and pull it up for me. So I'm looking for WordPad and poof, there's WordPad ready to go. The other big issue is something called the sidebar. The sidebar is a place where we store a bunch of little things called gadgets. For example, I've got a little picture viewer and I've got a clock up right now, but if I wanted to add gadgets, it's easy enough. I can just come in here and for example, add a notepad and now if I want to take notes, do the video. There we go. And now I've got a note that I can keep up there. I can add notes, whatever I might want to be able to do. The thing is, is that the sidebar ran the gadgets. So the sidebar is a separate application. If I want to, I can actually close the entire sidebar and take all the gadgets out. We'll see later in Windows 7 that even though the sidebar disappears, it becomes part of Windows 7. We still have gadgets, but no obvious sidebar. Next thing I want to take a look at is Windows Explorer itself. Vista made some pretty big changes when it came to Windows Explorer. In particular, we now have this handy left-handed menu. Uh, we have information down at the bottom that helps us have information about whatever particular screen we're looking at. And this is unique to Vista, is that Vista had a bunch of menu options across the top. This was actually dropped for the most part in Windows 7, but I always liked this part of Vista. I always kind of wish they'd have kept that one little aspect of it. So while we're in here, I want to talk a little bit about clicking. So what I'd like to do here is let's just open this up and we'll go 
into my desktop, which is currently empty. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new, just make a bitmap image. I'm going to call it Fred. Now, when it comes to Windows, in general, the rules are this. If you want to select something, you click it once, and it highlights. Then, if, then you can make manipulations to it. If you double-click something, that means you want to open it. So it's empty. It's a blank image, but I can open it. And if you want to edit something about this thing, you right-click on it whoops, and select Properties. So remember that. Anytime, anything in Windows, if you want to use it, you double-click on it. If you want to change something about it, you go ahead, right-click it, and select Properties. So this is just a simple bitmap image, but let's try it with something a little bit more complex. What I'm going to do now is go into my computer. Now remember, to open something, I double-click. No big deal there. Let me go back one. But now, if I want to mess with the local disk itself, I can right-click on it, select Properties, and whatever I might need to do to this particular item, a Properties menu comes up that's appropriate for that particular item. So you can see this is very different than what we just saw with the file itself. Other than that, for the most part, most of Vista stayed pretty much the same from XP. We still have a quick launch. We still have a notification area. But you'll notice I have a number of programs up and running right now. That's because Windows Vista brought in something new called the Aero Desktop. Now, the Aero Desktop manifests itself by primarily, more than anything else, something called Flip3D. Now, you'll notice I have four different programs open at the bottom of the screen. So if I hold down the Windows key and hit Tab, you can see that Flip3D allows me to scroll through all of the different applications that I currently have open. There are some fairly strict requirements to be able to use the Aero Desktop, and if you didn't have those requirements, you could turn it off. So what I want to do now is actually go in. By default, Aero Desktop's running on this system, but I'm going to right-click and I'm going to select Personalize. And in this case, I am going to go to Color and Appearance, and down here where it says Open Classic Appearance for more options, I can click on this and you'll see that Windows Arrow is shown as a particular color scheme. So I'm going to go to just to Basic. And it takes them a minute. And now, suddenly, if I hit, the, the arrow is gone. I can no longer make the Flip 3D work. And in Vista, I don't even get the little previews anymore. So, Arrow was great, but it really took Windows 7 before it went to the ultimate ability to do all that Arrow can actually do. A lot of people don't like Arrow and turn it off, but it's easy enough to turn back on. Let's just go ahead and do that real quick. Ta-da! And it's back on. We'll do the big test by holding down the Windows key tab. There's my Flip 3D back online. So I have got Arrow back. Now while we're in here, I want to talk about one more thing really, really quick, and that is the command prompt. So to get to a command prompt, all we have to do is go right in here. Now there's a couple of different ways. The official way to do it is you come in, you click Accessories, and you see that option right there It says Command Prompt, and that will bring you into this ugly, ugly thing called the command prompt. The command prompt is basically the operating system without the graphical user interface. You still have all the power, but you're using ancient commands based on an operating system of your forefathers called DOS. And while other episodes will go into a lot more detail on this, for right now it's important that you know how to get into the command prompt. So first of all, and this works for XP, Vista, or 7, there's always an option on the start menu that allows you to get to the command prompt. Or you can also just do a run and you type in CMD, Charlie Mike David, and that gets you to a command prompt as well. The command prompt is a place where, I'm not going to say you don't want to be, but it's a place where sometimes you absolutely have to be to do things. The command prompt is a really, really important tool. We've got other episodes that will go into command prompt in huge detail, but for right now, I just want to make sure that you can get to a command prompt if I ask you to do so. Now, Windows Vista was a great operating system. I know, I know, I know. But the reality was is that Microsoft brought in a lot of new ideas and a lot of new concepts. And 
to be honest, a lot of them weren't perfectly fine-tuned. It wasn't until Windows 7 came along that we really began to appreciate the power of Windows Vista.